everyone. Welcome to another evening of Frank Conversations here on Hard Copy and Maupe Ogun. Now, last week, we brought to you the first part of our interview with Nasir El Rafai, Governor of Kaduna State. He spoke on transparency in the National Assembly and his leaked 30 page memo to President Buhari. Tonight, we bring you the concluding part of our interview with him as he speaks on presidential ambitions whether or not he has any, the crisis in southern Kaduna, and his government stance on the Islamic movement of Nigeria. It promises to be riveting, so stay tuned. You have been accused of being ambitious. They say that all of this controversy <laughs> is about your ambition and about 2019. <laughs> You're laughing? Yes. Why? Because it's very funny. You're not ambitious? I'm not. I mean, you have to have some amount of ambition to run for my ambitions are of Kaduna State. My ambitions are, are, not, are not political in my life. I've never, I've had, I've had academic ambitions because I'm driven to excellence in academia. And right now I've enrolled in a PhD program to plan what I'll do when I leave office. So you I do not plan to run for president? I, I never did. If you... I've been accused of wanting to run for president since 2007. This is why Eradua exiled me. That's why Jonathan uh, persecuted me. And from the moment I joined uh, the CPC to work with President Buhari, everyone around him told him I came because I want to run for president. I don't want to run for president. Let's talk about your state where you govern. Uh, you, recently, you concluded the CADINVEST 2.0. But then at the CADINVEST is at uh, 1.0. There were concerns then about security, as there are right now about security in Kaduna State. It's one very sore point. I recall then when we asked you a uh, question then at CADINVEST 1.0, then you talked about the solutions you were proffering, even to the point of compensating those whom you felt were, you know, offended by what had gone on in Kaduna, mm. you have seen what has stemmed out of that. The people who have controverted what you said and said no, they believe that those who are carrying out the atrocities, um, you know, perhaps are sponsored by you. Yeah, uh, they are free to say that, but I'm the governor of the state. I have superior intelligence and security information. And uh, what I said is the fact, is the truth. What they said is an extension of uh, religious and ethnic bigotry that has uh, prevailed in Kaduna politics since 1999. But it's been a source of concern to you. When we spoke to you, you talked about how Kaduna was now divided along yeah. the river, you know, yes. the north and then the south. Yeah. And one of your tasks at that time was to bring together yes. uh, both sides of the divide. Yes, and we're doing that. Are you succeeding? I don't know. It's something that has been on for 37 years. It will take uh, a long time to, to, to come to fruition, but we are working on it. But one thing we are not working on is so we are not speaking to the bigots. We are not speaking to, the, to those that uh, finance the hatred. We are arresting and prosecuting them. Would you consider this union, the Southern Kaduna People's Union, as a group of bigots? They are. I don't recognize them. I will never meet with them. They do not represent anyone. They are part of the problem. And uh, we are watching them very carefully. And very soon, I will take certain steps if they do not behave themselves. Because there are boundaries of law. And my job is to enforce the law. They I want to make it very, very clear that Kaduna State, Southern Kaduna has elected representatives. And this so-called union has no mandate to speak for anyone. And they have been part of the groups that have been accelerating the rhetoric, and we, we are on to them. Well, they say that they represent 53 ethnic nationalities. Uh, they have been one of the loudest voices in terms of what's been going on in Southern There Canada. is a difference between the signal and the noise. One thing that those that know me know for sure is that I don't get distracted, I don't get intimidated, I don't get influenced by noise because I know what I have to do that is right and I'm focused and I don't submit to blackmail. Do you think this is political? It's partly political, it's partly ethnic, it's partly religious, but I frankly don't care. I'm the governor of the entire state. 
and in my election I won in every senatorial district including Southern Kaduna. And it is my duty to treat everyone fairly and evenly, but I will not submit to those hate merchants who have no work, who, who live off government by using blackmail and intimidation. I will stand up to them and I will deal with them with all the provisions of the law I have at my disposal. Would you but say we are going to unite Kaduna State, no matter how long it takes, we are on course, but we are not going to submit to the blackmail of the bigots. Would you say that your stance right now on Sokapo is going to help the call for unity in Kaduna? I believe so, because it is appeasing ethnic bigots that, that Sokapo represents that has brought the problem to where it is. I will end it by God's grace. How are you then dealing with the ethnic minorities who feel that you know there, there perhaps is some problem uh, in terms of how this problem has be, been handled? They are entitled to have their opinion. We explain why we are doing what we are doing and what we are doing. I do not expect that in the short term I will have the understanding of everyone. But that has been my public service uh, career. When I was uh, trying to do things in Abuja here, everybody abused, insulted, and accused me. And years after, people have realized why we did what we had to do, and many of those that accuse and insult us are the beneficiaries of our policies. It will be the same in Southern Kaduna and Kaduna State, inshallah. I am focused, I know what we have to do. We have studied this problem, we've studied the 37 uh, years of crisis in Kaduna State, we have uh, hired experts that know about conflict and peace building and we're working on it and by God's grace will succeed because we mean well. And those that are making this noise and uh, 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 preaching a narrative of victimhood to gain advantages that they are not entitled to will lose because we are focused, we know what we are doing and we know we are doing the right thing and will not submit to any threats and intimidation. What precisely are you doing? I have told you. In previous programs on Channels TV, that as far as the current crisis is concerned, we've adopted a three-step approach. We're in the second step now. The first was to militarize and, 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 and fill the three local governments of Southern Kaduna with enough security assets to stop the killings. We have more or less achieved that. We have brought in two battalions uh, uh, of the army. Uh, a, a regular infantry battalion and special forces battalion. We have 12 mobile police squadrons in the three local governments. So the, the violence has abated significantly. That's the first step. Okay. The second step is to apprehend and prosecute all those behind this. And we are doing that. We've been apprehending some of them. It's still going on. It will take time because it requires meticulous investigation. We don't want to make mistakes. We don't want to get the wrong people. But we are working on it and we are going to get them. And they are going to be prosecuted. And the third step is then peace building. Because part of the reason why we got to where we are, as I said, is that no one has ever been held to account for the atrocities in Southern Kaduna. And this has been going on for 37 years. So people have got used to the idea that whenever there is crisis, you can kill your neighbor and nothing happens after. We are going to change that narrative. We are going to put out all the facts of the last 37 years. We are going to identify if there is genocide and who is committing genocide and against whom. We'll have facts and figures and we'll put them out to the general public for anyone to controvert what we have found. We are the government, we have the data, we have the records, we have everything. A lot of what people are saying is false, is nonsense. It is meant to, 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 to acquire sentiments uh, and, and, and support from... Uh, uninformed and external bodies but until it is also you meant to make money for some people